Hello and welcome to yet another video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Today we are going to touch a controversial topic. So before we begin, please read the disclaimer that would appear here. Anyone who has an objection to the points mentioned in the disclaimer may please close the video now and move on to better things. This would save your time and may also prevent you from getting offended. But if you trust science and you want to know the truth, please hear us out fully. You won't get the complete information if you don't watch the entire video. Today we will be talking about a YouTube video titled Temple Mechanics vs Modern Science done by a person on his YouTube channel. The same video which is circulating across WhatsApp which has gone quite viral. Before we begin, please note again that we are not going personal against him. We are only reacting to the pseudoscientific claims made in the video. If you haven't watched the video, we will give a link to the video in the description box below. Although we really don't want you to add to his views which has already crossed 700,000. So to avoid that, we will present a synapsis as we go along. But first, so here is what the video is all about. What he starts off with is that the idol in the temple is made of stone. Stone is further made of minerals. So the sound which hits these idols creating an echo which bounces back into the human body and then using techniques like EEG, he tries to show that these echoes which hit the human body agitates the 70% water present in the body and therefore many developments take place in the body and the human brain. It may sound plausible on first hearing and many people may be deceived into believing it. However, people with a scientific temper can easily see through this. This person actually belittles science at every chance. He states that idiots who follow science will not be able to understand this. At the same time, his opening statement claims that echoes have been proved by science. Heights of hypocrisy. For this, he shows a person standing in the midst of a rock mountain and making a sound which echoes. So here he explains what is an echo. After this he states that the sounds or prayers rendered in a closed environment, room or temple will also hit the stone walls or idols and the echo created in the process will hit back the human body and create multiple effects. After this he visits a neurosurgeon. There he makes one of his friends to listen to two religious chants called Vishnu Sahasranamam and Lalita Sahasranamam. For those who don't know, Vishnu Sahasranama is an ancient hymn that literally translates to thousand names of Vishnu. Lalita Sahasranamam is a thousand names of the Hindu mother goddess Lalita. So while his friend listens to this, EG report is extracted by the neurosurgeon. An EG records the electrical activity of your brain via electrodes affixed to your scalp. EEG results show changes in brain activity that may be useful in diagnosing brain conditions. So he again states that idiots and morons who doesn't understand the power of prayers in temples should at least see this EEG report and understand something. Now let us debunk all his gibberish one by one using science. First, what is an echo? An echo is a reflection of a sound that arrives at the listener with a delay after the direct sound. The delay is directly proportional to the distance of the reflecting surface from the source and the listener. Typical examples are the echo produced by the bottom of a well, by a building or by the walls of an enclosed room or an empty room. The sound hits a hard surface and bounces back to you. Now the sound doesn't always come back in a straight line to you but may spread to different areas depending on the shape of the surface that the sound wave hits. 
Here we need to understand a scientific principle called the precedence effect. So what is the precedence effect? It states that when one sound is followed by another with a delay time of approximately 40 milliseconds or less, the two are perceived as a single sound. So for a person to hear two different sounds, the time gap between the two sounds must at least have a 40 microsecond gap. So let us go back to the mountains now. When we shout, the sound which travels through the air hits the different surfaces of the rock mountains and then comes back to us. Generally, sound takes one second to travel one feet. So for a sound to come back to us as a second echo, there should be a minimum gap of 20 feet between the sound source and the surface which it hits. That way, 20 feet up, that is 20 microseconds, and 20 feet down, another 20 microseconds, makes a sum of 40 microseconds for the sound to travel and for us to hear two sounds back. Now what does this guy do? After explaining the echo in the Rocky Mountains, he jumps straight into the temple's sanctum sanctorum. We do hear a reflected sound in an empty room or a bathroom. Anyone who has tried to sing in a bathroom would have realized that they sound different. But this is not an echo. This sound is called reverberation. Reverberation is when sound waves continue to vibrate after the original source of the sound has stopped emitting it. All the sound occurring due to reverberation has less than 40 milliseconds gap. So all the multiple sounds we create in a small enclosed room will hit the walls and come back to us as one sound only. So in a closed place like a temple, if at all it creates any return of sound, it will be reverberation. But if there are many people or many things kept in this closed area, the sound will hit everywhere and we will not be able to hear reverberation too. So to claim that echoes are created inside temples is factually wrong. So we understand that this guy has zero knowledge of acoustics. Every object has something called as coefficient of absorption. Sound absorption is a loss of sound energy when sound waves come into contact with an absorbent material such as ceilings, walls, floors, furniture and other objects. As a result of which, the sound is not reflected back into space. So, if we place a mattress in a room, most of the sound created will be absorbed by the mattress and hardly anything will be reflected back. Now this guy starts to talk about cymatic frequencies. What does cymatic mean? It is the study of wave phenomena, especially sound and their visual representations. When you play a guitar, when the string vibrates, along with the vibration of the string, it also affects the air near it by compressions and rarefactions. Because of the longitudinal motion of the air particles, there are regions in the air where the air particles are compressed together and other regions where the air particles are spread apart. These regions are known as compressions and rarefactions respectively and this is what caused the sound from the guitar. Now if you notice the guitar strings carefully, you will see some areas which vibrates heavily and some areas which are not moving at all. These non-moving parts of the string are called nodes. There will be hardly any movement of air near these nodes. Also, the string on the guitar is one-dimensional, that is, it only has a length and negligible width. But imagine you hitting a plate. The plate has two dimensions, so the nodes in the plate will not be like single points as in a guitar string, but long lines. I am talking in a room, so the nodes here would be found only if we see this as a three-dimensional area. Now if we put sand granules on this plate and make this plate vibrate, what will happen? Wherever the granules don't move, there will be a specific pattern created. These patterns are called nodal lines. This is what 
this guy shows and misunderstands this as an activity of water in our body. The water in our body does not remain in the form that we see in water bodies or cups and saucers. So the same effect won't be produced within the body. He also gets an EEG report done for his friend. He makes his friend first listen to Lalita Sahasranamam and later Vishnu Sahasranamam using an earphone. Then he shows the variations in his friend's brain activity using EEG report and claims see how these mantras create positivity and some kind of energy in humans. Absolute 916 quality nonsense. Why was there a variation in the EEG report? Our ear is a sensory organ. It acts as a receptor and filter in which auditory stimuli are transformed into information that is subsequently decoded by the brain. Now any kind of sound captured by the ear will always create some changes in the EEG report. The EEG report will definitely show variations in the brain activity even if it's a mantra or Gangnam style or Eminem. If this guy seriously wanted to do a systematic study on this, there are much better techniques and equipment that modern science offers now. One of them is FRMI or Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging or Functional MR. This measures the brain activity by detecting changes associated with blood flow. This technique relies on the fact that cerebral blood flow and neuron activities are linked to each other. When an area of the brain is in use, blood flow to that region also increases. By using this technique, he could have even identified exactly which area in the brain gets affected by the hymn. As he suggests that these mantras affect the sleep cycles, this could have been easily proved or disproved using FRMI. Having said that, to get an accurate result, there must be a control group also being tested on the same grounds where when his friend is made to listen to mantras, the other control group is made to listen to some other song or script and then compare the effects. As we have explained many times before that an accurate and scientific experiment or methodology always needs to have a control group. Sadly, our pseudoscientific friend does not understand this basic principle of science. Also, he keeps mentioning something about the rhythm in the chant going inside your parasynthetic nervous system and puts you into deep sleep within minutes. Uh, what? Parasynthetic? Did he mean parasympathetic nervous system? We initially thought it was a slip of the tongue, but when we heard him say it three times, we understood the truth. Also, he says a line where he says a kind of parasynthetic differences he is getting is anonymous. What? Wait, did he mean enormous? I guess he needs to attend the Shashi Tharoor school of English before he starts to use such gargantuan words. Now, the irony is that a person who doesn't even know the basic methodology of a proper scientific experiment calls all the people who follow science and its method as idiots. We sincerely wanted to show his video completely here and roast him and debunk his claims one by one on whatever he said. But such people are generally very sensitive and hence will claim copyright issues and then our video will be removed from YouTube. So our only sincere request to this guy is not to take support of science to justify his religious blind faith as both are two completely different subjects. They should not be forcibly mixed together just to get more people fall into the biggest superstition humans have ever made called religion. He obviously does this since he knows that taking the support of science will help him win more followers. Now his video is around 11 minutes long but to debunk his claims will require a longer time because anyone can talk any nonsense but to talk sense and to get the right message across the people it takes longer as a more detailed explanation is required. As you can see he has done this video without 
quoting any source for his information whereas we have put all our sources in the description box below we once again urge our viewers that we are not against india's heritage and culture nor against the person who made this video but only against the pseudo scientific claims that are made with vested interests he constantly in almost every paragraph makes claims against people who understand science calling them idiots morons and what not with little intelligence to understand the pseudo scientific claims that he vents out but he uses the same science to propagate his vested interests there are many others similar to him who try to promote pseudo science by adding scientific jargons without knowing the science behind or they might know the science behind but hides them from the all believing public he mentions a couple of them in his video you can add science to beliefs but you cannot add beliefs to science and make it appear to be true also with regards to heritage and culture pale blue thought believes that we may have had a rich and varied culture and heritage but if there are things which needs to be used on this day we ought to use it things that need to be modified to fit today's age needs to be modified and things that don't fit with the current understanding of the world because it was created when humans knew very little they need to be chucked out only then humanity will progress else we would still be sitting in a cave making stone tools and making such pseudo scientific claims let us not rest on our laurels let us push forward using the right methods of science we will be back soon with yet another interesting episode from pale blue thoughts until then it's bye bye from us